We had site number two, which was fracturing in Oklahoma City. I am Dakota. I'm Allie. I'm Diana. I'm Kim. I'm Kim. Oh. I'm Kim. <laughs> and I will be starting us off with um, how many hours, actually, that we committed on this project. And combined, we worked 15 hours this week on this project. So this is basically all we do. <laughs> So I'm interested in civil engineering, and I took on the position as a civil engineer in this project. And so I will be discussing site infrastructure, facility structure, and oil site storage. Our site infrastructure, um, how basically how we get to and from the site. We were on a section of land that already had some accommodations, so they had a three-place gravel road, and all we needed to do was extend that road up into the facility that we built. So, um, our area does not have that much rain, it's pretty moderate, so the gravel isn't bad about um, getting holes and stuff in it from the rain. So it should be able to withstand the amount of weight that we need to carry pretty easily. We built a new facility um, to house our machinery, our supplies, and also for offices and a water treatment plant. Um, the the foundation is concrete and it is a map foundation because we are in an area on a fault line with seismic activity. So the map foundation helps with that with seismic activity. The oil site and storage, we were lucky enough to have an area of land that already had an existing pump and an existing storage tank. So we chose to continue to use the storage tank and reinforce the pump with a pile foundation which is um, another earthquake friendly foundation. This is a sketch of um, our storage facility and also the site in general. So up here at the top picture, this is a floor plan of the facility. We have our parking garage, um, the other storage, the water treatment and lounge room, two bathrooms, ten offices, a parking lot. Um, that's a close up of some of the equipment in the in the parking garage. And then here we have our rig and our storage tank. And then over there, there is a view of our gravel road, the entire site, and also the Canadian River that runs through. So that is our water supply. And I will be talking about the environmental impact of fracking. And so environmental engineers, their job starts well before the site is even built. And so we have our site already built, which is really nice, but they consistently look at all the species that are in the area to make sure that by building the fracking site, you're not like, affecting um, the quality of life of any, uh, whether they're humans or like plants or animals, that kind of thing. And so another big environmental um, concern is the fracking fluid that comes from the site. And so as the graph shows, 99.51% of the fracking fluid is actually water and sand. So that can be like filtered out, the sand can be reused, and then the water can be treated. But then there's that other tiny percentage that um, is like jelly agent and um, like acids and stuff like that that can cause real harm to the environment if put directly back into our rivers and streams. And so we definitely want to take out that water and treat it so that it doesn't hurt the natural environment around us. So there are three main types of um, treatment options, uh, three main treatment options, filtration, precipitation, and disinfection. And so precipitation is uh, the first step that you would take is adding um, coagulants, which are material or like chemicals that are inserted into the water that combine with a lot of the, uh, the bad things in it and make them bigger particles so that they will settle at the bottom, which then you can take um, the precipitate and the other water and put it into a filtration. And so now you are taking all of the um, sediment that is at the bottom and you are kind of removing that and making it safer. And then for the final step, disinfection, you can either use bleach or you can use UV light uh, depending on where you're putting the water. So if you use bleach, then you're going to always have bleach in there. And you don't want to release that back into rivers and streams because it will kill off more than it probably should. So UV is definitely the route to go. Um, as I said earlier, it's cheaper, 
um, safer, and so always um, good there. So basically, you just run the water around UV light for a while, and it kills off all pathogens and other um, things that will hurt the environment. So now I think Diana is going to talk about electrical and mechanical engineering. Well, mechanical engineering is basically mostly about how to make the machines work on the drilling area, how to basically make all this happen. Everything starts with water <coughs> confusion and chemical mixing. As you know, uh, chemical using is made basically mostly chemicals that are known as they are not known. Like basically, for example, mercury, that is mostly one of the most concerned chemicals used. Later on, after using the mixing, that is mostly water and sand, we pass in the injection. When we put the injection, this usually has between three to four layers of cement, and then we pass to injection, which causes the partition, and then we try to absorb the water that is able to be basically reduced, like be able to we clean it, and well, then we pass the water treatment. <coughs> Why is it better to use hydraulic partition? Basically, because if we use a normal vertical drilling, it will take a lot of space when you could use a horizontal or more vertical drilling area because it's more it has more, it, it takes less space and it's basically more more pipes that we're able to construct than <coughs> taking too, many, too much area and basically destroying the environmental. Uh, yeah. Alright, so uh, electrical engineering. Electrical engineers, they monitor the whole site and uh, there are three main components to this. Uh, you have geophones, which they uh, you put it into the ground and it monitors, <coughs> monitors the seismic activity that's going on, which is probably one of the most important things also. Um, then there's micro seismic activity, which is used to track the fracturing that goes out once you put in the pipes. And uh, then there are sensors, and there are five of those actually. <coughs> So there are level sensors, and those are used in the tanks, because um, tanks are generally like too tall for regular people to check. Like you have to be like that height. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are pressure sensors, and pressure sensors, they um, they uh, okay. So an operator uses these to maintain like maintain pressure to keep oil bubbles from forming, which probably could cause a fire, so you don't want that. And then there are flow sensors. Those generally tell you like the substance, how fast it's going, coming in and through the pipes. And then there are temperature ind indicators, which is like a safety precaution. To So like uh, when the oil is over 120 degrees Celsius, alarms will go off and then like the people in charge, they could like stop what they're doing and go check on that obviously not supposed to be a temperature. And then there are leakage sensors, which I think that's the most important, because uh, for companies at least, because it could keep them from losing money or going back in production. Okay, so at this point you've heard a lot about the mechanical, electrical, electrical petroleum, and all the different disciplines of engineering and how they apply to this project. My job as looking at the more industrial engineering part of the portion, was basically finding out like all the supplies we would need and how we would get those supplies from obviously our supplier to the oil site. And so for this project, I felt it was a very appropriate to decide that we were getting all of our funding for this project from Halliburton, obviously because they were the really gracious donors that funded our camp. And so we decided that we would use Maxwell Supply Company to get all of our materials for our construction. And so basically the total cost of all of our construction for our site was um, $1,329,800, which is pretty expensive. And basically within that cost, 
It obviously included stuff from our electrical branches and our construction branches, of course. And basically, from our electrical costs, that basically composed of all of the sensors that Taj just finished telling y'all about, which is basically like the leakage, temperature, pressure, all of those types of sensors, which are very important in maintaining the function of our um, of our whole oil rig. And the construction costs, we decided to build a facility, which is kind of just like an office building where basically they keep track of everything that's going on on our oil site. And so basically what that consisted of was basically all of the furniture and desks and basically just miscellaneous office and restroom supplies that were in that facility. And that all came out to be about that much. And so that concludes our presentation. If anybody um, has any questions, we'd be happy to answer. Thank you so much. Once we got over that hurdle, like we finally got everything together for the project. 